I just couldn't believe that a four-line build script change would have a meaningful impact on the test time. But I tried it, and it changed everything. Developers write unit tests to get fast feedback on code changes, so it's frustrating when the number of unit tests in your project grows, and suddenly you're waiting hours every week for those tests to finish. So much for that fast feedback. But imagine what you could achieve if you got back just a percentage of that time. Get another feature out the door, and your boss might think you grew another pair of arms. Well, I've had plenty of time to think about this, waiting for this big old Java project to build. With 100,000 unit tests taking 24 seconds to run, it would be easy just to say, it's a big old Java project and we can't do anything about it. But that's not how we do things around here. Are you up for a challenge? Because if you run these tests 10 times a day and each time takes 24 seconds, how much would that be per year? 24, seven days in a month. How many days in a okay, year? Okay, let's just get on with it. I'm sure he'll have an answer by the end of the video. The point is, we're wasting lots of time waiting for tests to run, so let's actually do something about it. Take a closer look at this build to see what's really going on. While the tests are running, they get stuck at around a 12 second mark. Yes, literally nothing seems to be happening. But is that really true? To find out what Gradle is actually doing, pass the dash dash info command line option for detailed log output. Ah, generating HTML test reports. Those pretty HTML test reports are created after every test run. And for 100,000 unit tests, well, that's one big old test report. And can you believe that generating the test reports takes just as long as executing the tests themselves? Crazy. But you won't believe how simple it is to disable HTML test reports. Just locate the test task and set HTML reports required to false. Run again and seven seconds shaved off the test time. The HTML reports aren't getting generated now. Oh, but what's this? XML reports? CI tools like Jenkins and GitHub use the XML reports to show info about failing tests. We definitely don't need that running tests locally, so disable XML reports in the same way. And another five seconds saved. Can you believe it? Our 24 second build is now running in 12 seconds. That's twice as fast. How much time could that save us per week, per month, or per year? Times 3.14. Just give me a sec, okay? Oh, he's still working on it, bless. There's still one important point to consider. With reports disabled, Locally, you can still see test failures in the console, but what if you still need HTML or XML test reports in certain environments? Well, you can use a Gradle project property for that. Gradle build scripts are just code, so a good old fashioned if statement can check for the presence of a project property. Now pass the property on the command line and the reports are back. An ideal way to run tests in CI. But for local development where real humans are involved, leave the reports off and enjoy supercharged test runs. So how much time did we save, Blue Hoodie Tom? Yeah, sorry about that. The total amount of time waiting for tests per year is two days, so that speed up saves one day. Not bad. The size of the project you're building will influence how much impact this optimization has. The more unit tests you run, the more time you save. But whether you have 10 tests or 100,000 tests, this optimization won't fix slow running tests. Which is why you need to watch this video to learn the fast way to get slow tests moving again to save even more time. 